Hey, welcome back to another episode of Unlock Your Leadership. And today we're talking about servant leadership. And that's about all I got. See you on the other side. Hey, welcome back to another episode of Unlock Your Leadership. And in this video today, we're exploring the importance of servant leadership. Thank you so much for joining me here. I am excited to serve you today in this capacity on this episode on leadership. So I'm going to ask you, before we get started on this topic for today, I'm going to ask you that you would serve me in the manner following by simply liking this video, subscribing to it, and sharing it. All right, so we've been in this series of leadership and unlocking it, and we took a look at creating and mastering your skills last week. If you haven't watched that video, I'd encourage you to go back, take a look at that, and get acquainted with it. Today, we're talking on the topic of servant leadership. So what is servant leadership? To some of us, this is a little bit of a foreign concept. We've never heard of it before. Maybe we've heard little trickles of it, but really we haven't invested in the idea of it. A couple of years ago, I was actually in Florida at a leadership conference, and I got to sit in with Ken Blanchard and John Maxwell, and they actually proposed the concept or the idea of servant leadership. Now, I'd never heard of servant leadership, never knew of this concept. Uh, at the time, even though I was leading teams of people, I never heard of the idea, and it wasn't until they presented it that I began to understand it like it and began to implement it when I returned. So ultimately, what is servant leadership? Servant leadership is based on the idea that leaders are actually prioritizing serving the greater good, meaning that leaders with this style of servant leadership actually put their team and organization first above themselves and their own agenda. They don't prioritize their own objectives when it comes to leading. So sometimes in corporate America, we see this, unfortunately, we have this tier level system of one leader more or less pushing their own agenda, and they aren't really serving their team. They're not really serving their organization. Ultimately, they're serving themselves. But what would happen if we unlocked our leadership in such a way that we actually served others Instead of serving ourselves and making that the priority, what would actually happen to those that were leading and what would actually happen to the organization at large? So why is servant leadership so critical for leaders? And I just want to encourage you, if you have never heard of this or this is something new or maybe you've entertained it, I'm going to give you some very key takeaways today that you can actually apply to your team, to your organization. And if you don't have an organization, you don't have a team, you can still apply this in multiple areas of your life, even as running a family, leading every everything as far as relationships or involvement, whether you're at a church or in some form of any organization ultimately. But here's the thing. When we disconnect from serving others, we actually begin to underperform as leaders. Now, a lot of times we don't correlate those two things. Uh, We think that if we can be large and in charge and have a title that we're set, we've arrived, everything's going to go great. That's not how it works. Really, when we begin to focus on ourselves and less focus on those around us, those involved with us, and serving them, we actually begin to underperform. In fact, Don't even bother mastering your skills like we talked about in the last video because you're really not going to be able to apply those efficiently simply because you're underperforming. Your focus is in the wrong area. Now, the last result of any leader, no one wants to underperform. I'm sure if I sat down with you and I talked to you about what your goals are, I highly doubt the number one goal on your list would be to underperform (laughs) because when we underperform, the leader suffers. And when the leader suffers, the team suffers. And when the team suffers, the overall organization suffers. It goes from the top down. It's simple as that. When you pour liquid on top of someone's head, whether it's water, oil, whatever, it drips all the way down. It doesn't go up. It goes down. So it affects everybody below the leader. Ultimately, at the end of the day, 
No one wants to suffer. So question is, where do we begin? And if we want to perform well and at a higher level, where do we start? Well, I'm going to give you a few questions to ask yourself. So get out your pencil, get out a piece of paper, put away your phone. And if you do have a phone and you're watching this, simply silence it, but uh, don't be watching anything else. Write this down because these are going to be some important things that you are actually going to want to ask yourself and then return to your team, return to your organization and begin to brainstorm on these things. Number one is this, how can I serve my team better? How can I serve my team better? Instead of coming into your organization, instead of approaching your team and looking from it a standpoint where how can I serve myself, what's best for me, what if you started to ask the question, what is best for my team? What is best for the men and women that I am leading? What is going to be best for them? What if we start to put their agenda or the entirety of the agenda before ourselves what would begin to happen? Question number two, kind of a little bit of a vulnerable question, but it still needs to be asked. What does my team actually need from me? When was the last time you actually sat down with your team and actually legitimately in a meaningful way asked them what they need from you? Now, I'm not talking about being concerned if they need a raise or if they need another day off or how this is working, but what does your team actually need from you to get the work done? Do you actually know this or are you assuming? Are you directing them in the wrong direction? Are you being more of a dictator than you are a leader? Too many times I see men and women in leadership positions, they take on the momentum and the idea and the concept of being a dictator, and they're basically just telling people what to do because they think that's what they should be doing. Simply asking one question, what do you need from me as your leader, can really change the course of your organization. Third question is this, what would serving with excellence look like for you? What would serving with excellence look like for you? Listen, are you lazy? Are you being stupid? Are you fat? I mean, what are you doing in reality to actually be excellent in your life? Okay, excellence starts with us as leaders. Let me tell you what, if we sit there and we judge people and tell them that they're idiots and that they're dumb, what are we doing? Okay, number four, how can I create a leadership environment? You know, one of the last things that you want to do is walk in on a Monday morning, blow through the doors, create a tidal wave of change, and tell everybody that we're going to become a servant leadership environment. The problem is, majority of your staff probably has no clue what that means, and the fact that you just caught wind of what that looks like, sounds like, isn't going to work either. This is a slow change that you need to implement, and the first place that it begins with is you, understanding what that looks like. How do I implement that? How much time is this going to take? Can I get buy-in from all of my leadership team? Or are there going to be ones that are going to disagree? And if so, what's that going to look like? Where's that going to put us? Consider before you make the big changes what it's going to take, what the consequences are going to be, and how it's going to turn out ultimately. And is it going to better the entirety of the organization and your team? Number five, last question for you is how well would my team perform if they were servant leaders? This isn't a one man or one woman job. This actually takes an entire team in order to, for you to be effective and get things done. So you have to ask yourself, if I display servant leadership, how well would my team perform if they were all servant leaders as well and they bought in to this concept, to this idea, to this lifestyle when it comes to being leaders? So one thing we got to understand is servant leadership is about making a leader shift. Servant leadership is about making a leader shift. So in order to change the course of a ship, I want to illustrate for you a big, large ship that you normally see out at sea. In order for that to happen, it takes time for them to turn that ship around, okay? It can't be done quickly. You just don't turn the steering wheel like a car and it turns around really quick and does 180. It takes time, 
a lot of time, it takes a lot of strategizing and a lot of insight, and it takes a team to be able to turn that ship around. A small boat, on the other hand, or like a small organization, can actually be related to a small boat, okay? The boat can make quick turns, quick adjustments on the fly. If you're driving a little speedboat, which is a little small organization, you can afford to make those quick turns. You can make those quick stops. You don't have to plan. You don't have to strategize. You don't have to organize a team to make a big decision. However, when you're dealing with a larger organization of 100 people and more, what you're looking at is, is that you're looking at a large barge type ship. You just can't turn on a dime, make a change really quick, and then think that everyone is going to fall in line. And here's why. You can't afford to make quick changes as a large organization. And simply this, when you do, it takes time and the proper placement of everyone in order to turn the ship around in the right direction. Now listen, you can have a large organization, you can claim to make a quick turn, but the problem is most of the time what we find is people get placed into the wrong positions. And then when people are placed into the wrong positions, you have unhappy people, and then a lot of times they end up leaving. But you think as a leader, you're making the great grand choice and really it's gonna cost you in the long run. All because you miscalculated how much it would take to turn around your environment. These are things that you need to consider. I see a lot of leaders, unfortunately, treating their large organizations like little boats. And then they experience the frustration and they slowly burn out, their team burns out, and before you know it, they eventually lose those good people and the leader is left with barely anybody or very, very low retention. And obviously, that's not something you want to do. So making a leader shift takes methodical time and execution. And if you're the leader, you're the one at the helm, you're the one that it begins with. You're the one who's leading. Now, we can't require others to do what we need to do or what we want them to do when we're unwilling and unexperienced to do the same thing. How dare we think we can ask other people to do exactly what we're doing when we haven't even done it? We're only being foolish and we're being stupid in that case. But we also have to remember if you need to make a big turn, it needs to be methodical. Otherwise, you have a shaky foundation in your organization. And I'll be honest with you, if you're a leader and you're leading an organization of 100 of more and this this is what you normally do or your mode of operation. You're only fooling yourself and it's only quick little changes that you think are actually sustainable and really your foundation as an organization is shaky and faulty. Something to consider. So if you want servant leaders, then you need to be the servant leader first. Don't ask somebody to be something that you're not willing to be. You have to embody it, you have to live it, and you have to create the culture for servant leadership. Your life in and out of the office has to breathe servant leadership. It's not just when you show up, it's not when you clock in. You know, when you leave the building, you don't stop being a servant leader. It translates throughout everything that you do. So you can still command and demand as a leader, but you have to serve at a higher level than the rest of your team. And just leaving you with this ultimately, servant leadership begins with you and only you, the leader.